Well, the Fed made its interest rate decision yesterday. Part of that meant that they eliminated their tightening bias. In the press conference, Jerome Powell saying, we've likely achieved the peak in rates, at the same time saying they want greater confidence when it comes to getting inflation back down to the table, uh, back down to 2%. Still, the press conference was airing on the more optimistic side with Jerome Powell saying, we don't think that we need to see slow growth in order to achieve our inflation goals. Cut to what's happening today. We're seeing anxieties build up again in the regional banking sector. It kicked off yesterday with New York Community Bank. Overnight, we had a Japanese bank warn about its U.S. exposure. And today, it is washing up on the shores of the U.S. regional banks. Even our Canadian banks are under pressure. Is financial stability back on the table when it comes to risks for the Fed. Let's bring in Diane Swank, chief economist at KPMG. Diane, thank you so much for joining me. Um, you know, those issues, we kind of left them behind. March 2023 seems like a distant memory. Are you worried that that's coming back to the, fr to the fore, rendering a lot of what Jerome Powell said yesterday maybe not as uh, pertinent anymore? I don't think it's not as pertinent. I think one of the things that Jay Powell is looking at right now and the Fed as a whole is looking at is that we're entering 2024 with a lot of momentum, most notably consumer spending momentum. And he expects to see a slowdown and he expects to see additional credit tightening to occur. And I think that's really important. One of the things we forgot was many people didn't take into account how much easing in credit markets we saw since the November Federal Reserve meeting. And that was quite a bit. And that easing of financial conditions, actually, it's something that Jay Powell referred to yesterday in the sense of he's seen some signs in talking to businesses that we're seeing a reacceleration in economic activity. And so the Fed fully expects credit tightening to continue. They're talking about dialing back policy restriction, but doing it slowly. And I think the context, within that context, additional credit tightening is within their forecast. I think what we're still waiting to see is how heavy will that shoe that drops in terms of credit tightening be? But for the moment, We've got a lot of momentum entering into 2024. So is that is that a policy mistake? Um, there seems to be greater calls. You know, I'm just looking at trader notes coming across the desk saying because of the anxieties that these regional banks are showing um, that that maybe rate cuts should be on the table like now versus, you know, the May meeting. Well, remember, we didn't even get rate cuts in March of 2023 when there was extraordinary stress in the system. And I think that's worth taking into account. The Federal Reserve is still committed to both financial stability, not instability, so they will deal with, however they need to, any stresses that arise, but it's not necessarily to just cut rates. And I think that's what's important right now is we are going to see rate cuts this year, but the Fed is really looking at not doing the cardinal sin of central banking, and that is to cut rates only to have to reverse course and raise rates again. And I think they have many tools to keep the financial system stable, without just cutting rates. It's just that that's our muscle memory. That's what we're used to. And what you really saw in, J in Jay Powell's you know, press conference yesterday was him pushing back against that, talking about the more measured pace at which they'll be dialing back policy restriction. And I think that's a very important way to think about this. This is not the Fed responding to an economy that they're having to cut rates to shore up you know, an economy that's slipping into recession. That's just not what they see. And, and they said that maybe they don't need to see that, right? Was that meaningful that he said, we no longer think we need to see a slowdown in order to get inflation back down to target? Absolutely. And I think that was a bit of a nod, although he did say he wasn't convinced that the extraordinary productivity gains that we saw yet again today would continue. And that helped inflation, along with sort of a perfect storm of events to the positive side, to pushing inflation lower in 2023. He didn't know that they would continue. But there is nonetheless, he wasn't the enemy of growth anymore. That, you know, at one point in time, 
August 2022, that eight-minute and change speech, the there will be pain speech, was when he believed he was going to have to raise unemployment in order to derail the inflation that was searingly hot at that point in time. 2023 proved that isn't the case, and the Fed is no longer thinking that they have to do that in order to get inflation down. I wonder then if, if good news can then be good news for the market, right? If he's if nobody's cheerleading for bad economic uh, data because of what it means for rate cuts, then maybe the market can get around that too. Um, you know, we are expecting payrolls tomorrow. The unemployment rate is expected to remain you know, quite low, tick up modestly, but then might that move the mentality away from we need to see weakness in order to get these rate cuts? Well, I think I think it's really important to think about, you know, we've had more than two years, it looks like, with unemployment at 4% or lower. That's the longest span since the 1960s. That's really stunning. And we are likely to get more good news tomorrow. And I think that's important because we need to start adapting to the fact that the economy is normalizing. That's a good thing. You heard Jay Powell say that over and over again yesterday. It's normalizing. That doesn't mean it's going back to 2019 per se, but it does mean that we're in an environment where they can begin to lift their foot, um, or begin to tap the brake, lift their foot off the brakes, but not hit the accelerator.